Well, hello, hello again, uh, folks. And uh, this is a continuation of a segment series of um, episodes that I've been recording to just bring you um, a better understanding of the changes between Trump and Biden new tax law changes. Now, remember again, and I had mentioned this right from the beginning, all these are proposals that could be changing. Um, I really don't think to a drastic uh, extreme, but there might be some changes. So um, stay tuned uh, with my channel or my podcast, if it is that you're listening through that, uh, where I will be coming up with any updates uh, and changes that they might be doing once this becomes a solid uh, you know, law, right? But anyhow, this episode, um, and like I said, this is a playlist, you can always go and listen to, to the rest or watch my videos on YouTube um, that we have uh, throughout this series. Uh, I, so far, I have been, um, there has been uh, splits of segments of, not only I did one episode about earned income credit and child tax credit independent care, um, there's another one that I talk about retirement for 1K, for threes and IRAs, what changes are coming with that. And then there's another one also in regards to capital gains and itemized deduction. And this one's going to be about housing costs and how that's going to affect uh, deducting your um, property taxes. And also something that's coming out hopefully new, and I think this is going to be such a huge beneficial especially for renters, because I always felt like all the perks always go for everyone that owns a property, but nothing really to renters, right? So there might be a, a really new, um, it's going to be called the, 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 the actual rental tax credit. So we're gonna, I'm going to go um, dive in into that a little bit later on during this episode. We're also going to be talking about the healthcare costs. Uh, we're going to be mentioning about Affordable Care Act. We're going to be mentioning about um, the health savings account, HSA, if you have one. Uh, if you don't, you might want to consider to have one now more than ever. Um, you, I'm going to be discussing also about something that I think is really important, and it has to do with also um, the higher education expenses, right? Because I know some of you are above your heads with student loans and uh, what changes could come that might benefit you. So let's get started right away. Um, and hopefully this is just gonna give you more clarity of what the changes are gonna be. I know again, I mentioned this throughout all my, uh, you know, series is that I know there's a lot of complexity. I know there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, confusion with these changes. And this always is, by the way, it's nothing new. Every time we get a new president, something happens, you know, they have to kind of show off a little bit what changes they're gonna do. Hopefully, as long as they're good for us as a taxpayers, I think that's what matters, right? Um, so let's talk about housing costs. Okay, so we know, like I said, the renters have never have got any breaks. That's the truth. So now uh, Biden is trying to establish a refundable first down payment tax credit up to $15 thousand dollars that's right you heard me right so what does that mean Liz what well, that means that you're going to be able to get a refund if you go and purchase your property now one thing is it, it is very clear by the way uh, it's your first down payment so if you own property before unfortunately you you're not going to qualify but if you have been holding back and holding back and finally you say oh my god the interest are so low uh, but yeah, remember the pricing of the properties are really high. Yes, you can buy less now, but you're also paying probably an overprice on that property. So be cautious about that. Actually, real estate and e-commerce is one of my niches that I do for uh, small business owners. So I do understand real estate very well. But however, if you can find a good property at a reasonable price at a low at a low interest rate that we are below three percent right now for many taxpayers that can qualify for that, or even less than 5%, then this will be a phenomenal thing because if you wait until next year and this hopefully becomes a law, remember this is a proposal, you might be eligible to get up to $15,000 of credit 
as a down payment on your first property. Wow, that would be amazing, right? So currently that is not possible right now under Trump's tax laws. But like I said, with Biden, that might become a possibility, okay? Uh, now remember, we're only able to deduct interest pay up to $750,000 on a mortgage debt, okay? Um, and you know what? That might get removed with Biden too. So there's a possibility of that, okay? Um, I think what's really important too is that we have SALT, which is called a, the, the local sales tax. Um, if you may recall, there was also a cap put into that, meaning that a lot of people had to pay 10, 000, up to $10,000. It was the maximum local property taxes that you can get out of your property. Uh, now, that might also be removed or might be repealed. Okay, um, it's still clear, but hopefully that might be the case. Um, again, I mentioned in one of my other episodes that a lot of times, depending on the state where you own property, your property taxes could be extremely high because, right, your property has gained equity and it's worth more money than when you purchase it. So that also increases your property taxes and $10,000 might not be good enough. Okay, uh, but yet you have that cap. So that's not helping you reduce your, your, your taxable income, all right? Now, here's the good news, okay, for renters. Listen, listen to this. Um, they're trying to create um, what they call a, a tax credit. It's going to be designed to reduce the rent, okay? And utilities to 30% of income for low-income households. Okay, so this is gonna be a separate new credit has never existed before, where it's gonna allow you to pretty much have a credit up to 30% combined between your rent and utilities, okay, for low income household. So if you're in the low income household, you might be able in the near future, again, if this proposal gets approved, that you'll be able to, to you know, take that as a credit, not as a deduction, but as a credit, meaning that you get a refund from it, up to 30% from your utilities and your rent combined. This is a very good thing, okay? Another thing I really, really like, like I said, is the fact that now you're also gonna have the opportunity to buy homes or condominiums, right? Or even manufacture homes, that's right. That you're gonna be able, that they're distressed. What does distressed property mean? Nothing more that it requires a lot of repairs. That means that it's not in moving condition, okay? Remember, anything that is in moving condition, you're always gonna pay a lot more money. However, if you're able to purchase a property cheaper, right? But you have to do more repairs, well, with Biden new uh, proposed laws, they're saying that they might be able to create a credit for families to actually renovate, okay? These type of, uh, you know, distressed properties, right? Which are in bad condition, but you be able to get a tax credit to purchase these properties and it's gonna benefit you in your tax return. So we have a lot of things happening right now, and I think I'm really excited about it because like I said, number one, you'll be able to get a first down payment tax credit up to 15,000, one five, right? You'll be able to get a rental's tax credit, okay? Combined with utilities of 30% per year, okay? You'll be able to actually buy uh, 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 you know, a property that requires a lot of repair, as we call them a distressed property, okay, and also get a credit for that. And if we can remove the local tax cap of $10,000, that means you'll be able to do that even more. So I'm really excited about this for a lot of you. So um, again, if you don't understand that, replay, you know, my podcast or my episode, um, and listen to this carefully because these are big, big changes. I'm sharing this, by the way, through my YouTube um, channel, um, the actual screen uh, where I got this information from. And it's really, really amazing. I love this portion and I wanted to share with you as soon as possible. Let's talk about the healthcare costs also. Uh, that's the next segment. 
Now, so far, we know that um, health care costs is a refundable and advanceable premium tax credit for the enrolling into the Affordable Care, Care, Care Act, right, which is the ACA. Now, that was for people who were going into marketplace, okay, and they had a poverty low income. That means that if you were between 100 and 400 percent of federal poverty level, then you would be eligible to get that credit. All right. Now, the only issue with that was that a lot of people were missing out also in getting an Affordable Care Act credit because they were just right above that percentage. And because of that, what, what Biden is trying to do now is expand, okay, that ACA uh, premium tax credit and eliminate the income cap. And I think that will be amazing because now that means that you'll be able, okay, to hopefully now register and enroll, okay, in what we used to call the Obama Healthcare, and we still call it ACA, the ACA, is to enroll and maybe next time you're eligible to actually get the credit because you don't have to be in extreme of poverty to be able to claim the premium for this healthcare. Okay, so I think this is really, really good. I also like the fact that right now he's also willing to expand the actual long-term care insurance for individuals, okay, uh, with the retirement savings. So what does that mean? That means that now you're able to really take money from the long-term care insurance with your retirement savings. So if you need to continue, you know, contributing to your long-term long care insurance, then you're able to take it out of your savings, your retirement savings, and put it towards that, okay? So that's a very, very good thing. Um, I like that, especially because, again, uh, due to all these health conditions that we've been having lately with COVID, um, I think this is going to really, really benefit. And then finally, I want to talk a little bit also about the health savings accounts, which is the HSAs. Um, and what's happening is um, people who wanted to contribute to this health savings account, uh, unfortunately, there was an age cap. Um, and the gap was that you have, once you reach 65, you couldn't do a contribution towards that. Well, that hopefully might be removed. And if it is, or adjusted as we call it, then that means that even if you're over the age of 65, you still will be able to do a contribution to health savings account. By the way, if you're not very familiar with health savings account, um, it really allow individuals to have a tax preferred basis to cover the cost of a certain qualified medical and health care expenses. And by the way, I have a separate episode really going into details of what is an HSA um, and how to obtain it. And it's really, really beneficial because one of the things that there was also a gap into that is that uh, if you, you could qualify as a disability, if you're disabled, as long as you were um, what they call blindness or you were disabled before the age of 26, okay? Now the new law, or hopefully the new law, is going to be able to expand that to up to the age of 46, okay? So again, removing the age gap of 65, meaning that you can contribute beyond that age, and two, instead of only being disabled or blind, prior to the age of 26, you have the expansion to 46. Now, I think this is really important, again, for the people who have health savings account. This is a phenomenal vehicle, by the way, folks. I mean, you're able to save, and I call this, it's what I call a, um, really a uh, super uh, IRA. And the reason for it is because the monies that you put contributions into HSA are pre-tax, the same as a traditional. And then when you take it out for medical expenses only, that's the only catch 22, you can only take out the money for medical expenses, it's actually not taxable. So you see the difference? You put in money in, you're able to deduct as a traditional IRA, but then when you take it out, it's like a Roth. It doesn't cost you anything. Again, remember, the big restriction here is that that money 
it's only used strictly for medical expenses, but we all have medical expenses. We all have co-pays. We all have doctor's visits. We all have, you know, uh, out-of-pocket expenses, right? Uh, whether it's glasses or contact lenses that we need, or perhaps we need to have some therapy or prescriptions. This is what HSA comes in so extremely handy. Okay, uh, and then finally, what I wanted to also kind of bring up that I think was so important, and this has to do with higher education credit, because I know so many of you, especially the millennial generation, they're up to their heads with student loans. And, um, you know, yes, there's been postponements of your payments because of all this crisis that we have had with COVID, but all that is gonna disappear, and now, hopefully with the new reform, that means that they're gonna be more relaxing with the payments. What does that exactly mean? The benefit is that any unpaid loan amounts that you have after 20 years since you borrow that loan, okay, could be forgiven. That's right. So it will never be treated again as a taxable income. That's big, big news for some of you out there, student loans, that you have outrageous balances. And so again, what they're planning to do is create some sort of automatic loan forgiveness, that if your loan, your student loan is over 20 years, it might be forgiven and not taxable any longer. And I'm excited about this because I think that a lot of you have been going through a lot of changes of careers, and sometimes it's not fair that if you're in a different career, you're still paying for education from maybe 20 years ago, 15 years ago. I wish they would do this, and this is just my opinion, down to 10 years. Um, 20, I still think, is a lot. That's my personal opinion. But either way, it's better than nothing. So if you're one of those who are listening to this or watching my, like I said, my YouTube channel, make sure that you keep you know tuned to this and see if this becomes crystallized meaning that this proposal becomes completely validated and if it does time for you to jump in and get rid of that student loan who has been outstanding for more than 20 years it will no longer be taxable and i'm happy for you for that so again if you found any valuable information to this please as usual i was asked it's free content that i'm sharing uh, you know, like, subscribe, and share, share, because sometimes, again, we want to share information from the right source to people that we know, and I know there's a lot of people out there sharing information, but sometimes they're not really qualified, so please be cautious in that, and again, if you still pretty much, uh, you know, still confused or have more questions, feel free to reach out to me and my team. Uh, like I said, again, I am a tax expert. I've been doing this for more than 16 years. And uh, as a tax accountant, I understand the ins and out of the tax laws, and I'm here to help you. So anyhow, I hope you stay safe, and I say, go back, look at the series. We have several videos within this, um, you know, Trump and Biden, uh, you know, uh, taxes. Uh, and I think this is going to help you to understand exactly more simple, you know, instead of reading so many articles and sometimes ending up being more confused. Anyhow, I wish you the best, a lot of success, and a lot of good health. And like I said, take care until the next episode. God bless. Bye-bye.